Hi there. Welcome to the Shoba's Nest. My name is Sandra, and I'm so glad you're here. Today's video is part of a collaboration with my sweet friend, Annie. More on that later. This first project was so much fun. I just had my creative juices flowing and I thought it was just a really neat way to upcycle some terracotta pots that I had painted previously. I've got two of them and they're both going to get a couple of coats of white chalk paint. I'm taking a small piece of DOS clay, I get this at Michael's, and I'm just working it in my hand so it gets nice and soft and malleable. What I'm going to do is just squish it down into sort of a circle or an oval shape. And I'm using this old roller that I had from the Pampered Chef. I've got a couple of them, so this was perfect to just help me roll out this medallion into a nice even piece. Now, if you're a crafter like me, you probably have an arsenal of different things in your stash, but I'm going to be using these rubber stamps. I bought a set of four of them at Michael's, I think for $3.99, and they still have this set there, and I thought it was just so pretty. What I'm going to do is just literally push in my rubber stamps and create a beautiful design for this medallion. I did push a little hard because I wanted a really nice indent on it and I did get a little bit of the circle of the wood but the clay is really forgiving. You just run your finger around it really gently and you can smooth that out. You can create any design you want. I'm just going to fill this with all sorts of different shapes with these florals and some leaves. And I'm going to actually let some of them hang off the edge as well. And I think this turned out really pretty. Here's a look at how it turned out. You can see how I took some of the stamps right off the edge of the clay. Next, I'm just going to smooth out the edges of the clay. There were a few kind of ridges and bumps. I didn't want it to be a perfect circle, but I wanted it to be a little smoother. I'm going to use this round one for on the larger pot and I'm just kind of turning it to see where I want it to set. I wanted it to end up going sort of on a longer oval so I'm just kind of pushing down that top portion a little bit just to get it the right shape. I'm going to use some tacky glue to hold this in place and I'll also use some masking tape to make sure it doesn't slide around. I like to spread the glue around with my fingers to make sure I can get it all the way out to the edge. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad you decided to click on my video. If you like what you see so far, I'd love it if you could click that red button and subscribe to my channel. For the second smaller pot, I wanted to make sort of a trim accent around the rim of the pot. So I'm just creating a snake out of my clay and I'm just going to make sure that I have enough length to go around the pot rim once. Then I'm going to use my hands to flatten it down a little bit and I also use the rolling pin just very gently to flatten it out even a little bit more, make it about an inch wide. To create the design on this one, I'm using this sunflower rubber stamp and I'm pushing fairly hard into the clay. I want this to have some really good details. And this is the perfect stamp to use because you can see all of the little nooks and crannies where the leaves are or the petals are of the sunflower. And I'm just going to keep going all the way across and create this beautiful trim mold. I'm going to use the tacky glue once again. You can use whatever permanent glue you have. You could use E6000, you could use wood glue. You could also use more of a all-purpose sort of strong carpenter glue, whatever you have on hand. You could even use a super glue. This was a little tricky trying to get this on there without <laughs> having to actually break it. So what I'm doing here is just very gently pushing the clay onto where the glue is. And then I've got to kind of get the rest of it out of the way so I can add a little bit more glue. Now, 
if I would be doing this again. And what I can tell you to do is put the glue on your rim all the way around. Do that first and then you can just go ahead and lay your clay down and make sure that it's in the right spot without having to fuss with the glue every time like I'm doing here. I didn't break my clay, but a couple of times I thought it was going to happen. Once I got all the way around, I used my Cricut spatula just to cut the clay and then I joined it together. I did cut it a little short, but I was able to kind of just very gently push the clay together so I could get rid of the gap. Once the clay was completely dry, I believe I left them overnight. I don't think you have to do it overnight. You want them to be almost dry before you paint them or do anything with them, but because I was using the glue that kind of made it slide around, I decided to just let it dry overnight. Now I'm going over all of the clay areas with just a one coat of white chalk paint just to make them look the same color. It's so pretty just the way it is. I just love how these turned out. Now that everything is dry, I'm taking some of this Parisian gray chalk paint. It's just a light gray and a chip brush that is really rough. I wanted to have a lot of texture on this and I wanted to be able to actually really have to push with my brush to get some of the marks on. I didn't want to distress it completely all the way around. I wanted to have some darker spots, some lighter spots, and really make this look old and aged. Next, I'm going to be adding another color. This is called Mushroom. It's very similar to the mineral color, I think, in the Waverly chalk paint. And this is a softer chip brush. And you can see that I'm getting a little bit more marking on here because it is softer. So it allows me to add a little bit more paint as well. I wanted this to have a really nice two tone effect. Once I had the distressing the way I wanted it to, I took the rough chip brush again and just started making little areas like this at the bottom, at the top, just so it would look like the paint has chipped off and worn even more than in the other areas. So you can do this or you cannot do this. It's totally up to you, but I just thought it would look really neat having some areas that were a little bit more distressed than the regular portion. The taller pot had the medallion on the bottom, but this one looked a little plain next to that one. So I decided to take this script stamp that I have and I pushed it down, but I didn't push all of it down. You're going to see here in a second that it just came off on some of the areas and the majority of it in the center was not there. And that's exactly what I was looking for. I wanted it to be sort of worn away. And now I'm going to take the rest of the ink that's on this and just kind of haphazardly go all over the pot and just push it down in different areas. So it looks like this print was just kind of scattered on the pot. Then I added some greenery, some ribbons, a shabby chic bow or two, and I think these turned out absolutely shabby chic and a little bit farmhouse too. Let me know what you think. So let me tell you a little bit about who I am crafting with today. Annie from Crafting with Indie Annie Jones is who I call the queen of shabby chic. She does vintage shabby chic cottage core and more and some of her beautiful decor pieces are absolutely amazing. The details that she adds and all of the tiny little bits and pieces that come from her stash mostly are just amazing. You've got to go check out her channel. I'll have it linked down in the description box. Make sure you also go check out her video once you're done with mine. Show Annie all the love and support you give to me by subscribing, hitting the like button, 
and the notification bell so you don't miss out on any other videos from Annie. You'll also want to go back and check out all of her previous videos. There is some wonderful decor inspiration there that you're not going to want to miss out on. For my projects today, because this is Shabby Chic Meet Farmhouse, I wanted to use some classic farmhouse decor pieces. A mason jar is definitely something that you see in farmhouse decor, a lot of it, but I want to make this one Shabby Chic. So I'm taking this wide lace ribbon and I'm going to glue it around the bottom of the jar and then I'm going to add another layer on the top of the jar. And that's just going to create a really beautiful ambiance for what I'm going to be doing with this later. I'm just using tiny little dots of hot glue and that will hold it in place perfectly. Once I had the lace all done, I took a piece of masking tape and just applied it where the top of the lace was. Now I'm giving this small little section a couple of coats of white chalk paint. You don't have to do this part, but I just thought it would make it look a little bit different. I wanted it to be not your typical mason jar decor piece. When I remove the tape, I'm left with this clear band. I'm going to add some burlap ribbon. You don't have to do this, but I thought it framed all the lace and the white out really pretty. I am definitely not a pink girl, but I'm starting to lean towards some of the softer shades like this ribbon. It's beautiful satin and it has a pretty cherry blossom design on it. And I thought it would be perfect just to round out this project. Using the same ribbon, I created a double loop bow. I'm just going to glue that off center a little bit. I'm always an off center person. Gluing things in the center just it just doesn't do it for me. Anyway, I'm going to fix these tails so they sit really nicely. And then I'm going to add some solo wood flowers to the one side. And I really love how this one turned out. It was so plain to start with. And it is just a beautiful piece of shabby chic farmhouse decor now. And you can use this to add some more florals to the top of it if you like. You can add some fresh greenery in here. You can also just maybe use it as a utensil jar or a makeup brush holder. You could also put some candles in it and make it shine. I really love this piece and I hope you like it too. Another material that is used in farmhouse decor a lot are wood slices and wood pieces and things. This one is a seven by seven and a half inch, I believe. It was a Michaels purchase, but it was donated to me by my sweet friend, Kimberly, who sent me a whole bunch of different boxes of supplies. So thank you, Kimberly, if you're watching, I truly appreciate it and I'm working through all your supplies. I put this wood slice through my laser machine and engraved this beautiful cow print on it. It is absolutely gorgeous. And what I'd like to know from you all is if this is something you would like to see up on my Etsy shop. I could do cows or horses, sheep, goats, pigs, chickens, you name it, I can do it. I could even do some floral designs. So if this is something that would interest you and you'd be interested in purchasing some of these things, let me know down in the comments and then I'll see about putting some designs up on my Etsy shop. I've added some of these Dollar Tree lavender sprigs to the one side and now I'm going to add a little bit of more of a focal point with some solo wood flowers down at the bottom and I'm going to drag them all the way partially up the right side there where the lavender is as well. Once I finish with that, I'm going to add a little bit more greenery down at the bottom and in between some of the solo wood flowers. And this project is finished. I had to include some type of lavender because that's my 
favorite farmhouse flower. Let me know what your favorite is down below. If a windmill doesn't scream farmhouse, then I don't know what does. I'm going to just use the blades on this and not use any of the poles. To cover all of those bright colors, I gave it three coats of white chalk paint. And then I printed off some designs on tissue paper that I am now going to decoupage onto the different blades. So I've got some larger pieces and some smaller pieces, and I'm going to just kind of put them all over the place, not in any particular pattern. I'm just going to make sure that each blade has some type of decoupage on it. I'll have this printable available on my website. All you have to do is click the link down in my description box. If you don't already have an account, sign up for a free account and then log in and you'll be able to download as many as you like. I'm using Mod Podge to apply the tissue paper onto the blades and then just very gently putting some Mod Podge on top to make sure that it stays down. And then I'll just set it aside to dry. For all the little excess tissue paper that was hanging off the edges, I'm just taking an emery board and gently filing everything off. Here you can see all of the designs that I have. Now I'm taking the same Parisian gray that I used for the pots and this smaller little chip brush. It's just easier to get into all of the little nooks and crannies with a smaller brush. And I'm going to dry brush it fairly heavily. I want to have some really good distressing on this. I want the decoupage pieces to also have a little bit of gray paint on them and I'm kind of accenting the edges of the blades too. On one of the blades I had accidentally put too much paint on the corner but then I really thought that that looked amazing. So I went with my brush and just kind of added a little bit of extra paint to each corner of the blade and that just made it look even more weathered and distressed. I'm using a lace ribbon which I tied into a bow and now I'm going to add some lavender underneath it and I tried making this bow off center, but it just didn't look right. So this is one of the rare times that I put things in the center. I'm going to add some of these larger lavender pieces, and then I'm going to add a little bit of greenery, some smaller little lavender pieces. And for a final touch, I'll add some of that lavender satin ribbon you can see up in the right hand corner. I'm going to add a few longer tails and add some beads at the bottom of the tails. And I think this one turned out really pretty too. Thank you so much for spending some of your time with me today. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. Don't forget to check out Annie's channel, Crafting with Indie Annie Jones, and you're not going to want to miss her video. Links are down in my description box. If you like what you saw, I'd love it if you could come back. Hit that red subscribe button. That black arrow will point you in the right direction. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now.